So maybe let's somebody All right, it's seven o'clock. I'm gonna call the regular meeting of the board of selectmen to order. For a of meetings. Alan, would you meet us? I do have an added agenda item. Um, it's deadline specific and it's the pound application to the State Homeland Security Grant Program for Region 3. Um, if I could ask that be added as agenda item 8F. So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Jason. Yes, ma'am. May I add, may I expand that motion, please, to include what the agenda item is? The so moved will really say nothing to the to the uh, yeah. Thank Praise you. out the um, phrase it out when we get there. Thank you. Um, all right, so all members of the board are present. Um, can I ask for a review and approval of the meeting minutes from September 7th, 2020? I'll make a motion that we took the regular meeting minutes of Thursday, September 7th, 2023, as presented. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion or corrections? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Here. Public participation. This is one of the public's two opportunities to address members of the Board of Selectmen. Um, I'm going to ask that you uh, keep your comments to not more than three minutes. Um, if I'll first offer anybody in the room an opportunity to speak, and then I'll offer anybody who's online the same. Is there anybody in the room who would like to address the board? Yes, sir. Name and address, please. Uh, Louis Reale, R-E-A-L-E, 414 Canyon Ridge Drive. Can I come up? Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thanks for letting me speak. Um, a couple of safety issues. Um, we live in the apartments there. Uh, in the last year, I've seen some really close calls on the people turning into our apartment complex, the left-hand turn. Yep. Um, you can't fix stupid and you can't fix arrogant people who are tailgating you. The sign says quarter mile away before Reve is 35 miles an hour. Nobody's doing that. So as you come in, and as a resident, my neighbor is behind me, you come in, you have to slow down to 35, you're making a left-hand turn. This past year, I've seen some close uh, crashes. People tailgating, uh, screaming at you, giving you the finger, yelling and screaming, blowing the horn, uh, coming up so close on you. Now, the sign that has the turn signal in, is right at the signal. There is nothing before that to let anybody. Now, signage is only good as people want to look at it, but maybe we should try to work with the state and see if we can get some other signage that there is a left-hand turn coming up. Um, because somebody's going to get rear-ended. Last week, the reason I'm here is because I saw a horrible incident two times in the, in the same day. Somebody was turning into the Canyon Ridge, and the person came up behind them and passed them on the left. So if they turned, they were getting, and they were in the other lane, and if somebody's coming in, it's a head-on collision. An hour later, the same thing happened. Taking a left-hand turn in the mansions, they passed, they, they were yeah, passing. Yeah, the person was in the left-hand lane to come into their apartment complex. They were screaming around, the first one blowing the horn, went into the left lane and went around them and then about an hour later, I saw it. That's why I'm here tonight, because I had enough. After seeing that, I said, something's got to be done. I know it's a state issue, but I come to you guys first with it to see if there's any more signage we could put before Reveille's, saying that there's a congested area with a left-hand turn. You can work with the state on that, DOT. 
but something's got to be done because somebody's going to get rear-ended and, and, and it's getting bad. I, you know, I talked to a lot of people before I came here tonight and they talked about it. They've had people blowing the horn, screaming at them. What are we supposed to do if you're going sick and, and people are coming up on you on 60 miles an hour? I had somebody last week that was on my tail so close. It, it was amazing that he didn't hit me. So I'm asking if there's something you can do with the state to see if we can get some better signage a little ways up. I put my turn signal on as soon as I hit the base and I just slowed down and, and I've you know, been yelled at, screamed at, what do you want me to do? I'm not going to go 60 miles an hour into a left <laughs> running lane. So, I'm, you know, I'm trying to do that. The other one is a sight line issue at uh, Yasky and North. I've called a few times about them cutting the grass there. I worked for the town of Enfield for 20-something years. The best solution, you don't have to anybody go out there, is put some ground cover down there and be done with it. And there shouldn't be any signage put up there. I know it's going to be political time pretty soon, but I don't think there should be sign there because signs are taken away from that little bit of view there. One other thing I think the state should look into, when you're looking right, you're on Yasky, going to take left, you're looking right. If in the winter, when all the leaves are gone, if they could cut back that corner, that would give you probably another second or two of sight line where you could see a car coming. So all it would take, a couple guys with chainsaws, to just go back and, and burn that whole corner, that bad corner, push it back a little bit, that would give a person another second to, to see a car coming around that corner. It's pretty simple. It's not, a, I looked at it, it's not a big situation. The state could go and cut it back with chainsaws in the winter when all, of, all the brush is gone. So those are the two things I'm really worried about. I think somebody's gonna get really seriously hurt. Thank you, sir. What was your address? 414 Canyon Ridge Drive, building four. 401. 414. 414, yeah. Uh, and then the last thing, there's something really good. I just want to thank the Parks and Recreations for a great summer concert series and a beautiful facility. You guys really did a nice job there. It's really safe. It's clean, good bands and everything. And lastly, to Tom and his wife and his staff at the Broadbrook Opera House, I'm going to tell you something. I call him my Messiah because he's resurrected all that music that I love from the past. It's a great place. It's taken off. People are talking about it all over the state. They're coming from, I've been to 12 concerts there. There's people coming from New York City, New York State to come to that thing. Everybody's happy. It's well run. Whatever you guys can do to help him out and keep it successful. And the people watching out there, go to the Broadbrook Opera House. Go get something to eat and then go and watch some good concerts. I thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes, sir. Name and address, please. Paul Anderson, 89 Main Street, Broadbrook. Uh, potential copy of the letter I got from the water company. Have you been able to get any additional information from the water company? Because that deadline's gone. And their no, website I, says absolutely nothing except the same September 15th date. I was with them yesterday and they didn't have an updated date. And they claim that that's where the public should go to see updates, but they've never updated it. Obviously, they're on the street still and it's not, it's past the 15th. The fact that they cut the wrong side of the road has slowed them down a little bit, but <clears throat> that's beside the point. They're still there and they've got much work to do. So this is going to drag on for a long time. And I think we're entitled to know what's your estimate. They have to have an estimate. They're paying this contractor. They ought to be able to say, what's it going to take now? Okay. Best I can do. Thank you, sir. Thanks for your time. Yes, sir. Name and address, please. Are you sure Depot Street? It's more bear sightings in town. One is on Depot Street near uh, Mill Pond Village. There's another in Windsor Village. Oh, God. Just for your information. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Name and address. Hey, Dad, Love 125 Depot Street. Um, first, I want to thank Mr. Reale. Um, You know, when people come in with their observations about problems for sight lines, uh, stop signs that are blocked by 
tree branches, all that kind of stuff. That's that's what we need as a community for people to identify and bring it public because that's gonna that's gonna save lives truly. Yeah. And um, I see stuff all over the place. I should be recording them too. I'm gonna do a better job. Pretty good, good good job coming in tonight. Really appreciate it. Thank you. I want to talk about um, a known problem in town, which is um, about town vehicles and town equipment being sold to town employees at below market value or for nothing. Um, and um, be transferred for no value. Um, there was a FOIA request that was made. I didn't make it. Somebody got a, a list of all the town inventory. We now know that town vehicles have been sold to town employees without uh, far below fair market value. Uh, town equipment is being transferred to employees, um, town employees for little to no value. And, um, and I'm not talking about the police vehicles. I'm talking about that in a second. You have, for example, uh, directors of departments that have vehicles. We know at least one instance where the, the director had a vehicle, got a new vehicle, and sold his old vehicle to a town employee at well below fair market value. Never made public, never publicly disclosed. It's probably unethical because the town ethics rules say you're not allowed to use your position in town to give you or anybody any specific advantage that is not available to the members of the general public. And that's a problem. Um, and I've asked for the bills of sale. I'm going to be getting them through my request, and I'm going to see what other vehicles have been sold below um, fair market value and what equipment's been given away. I want to talk about police vehicles because you had last, yesterday, I think, was, in, was the last two police vehicles that were sold, so supposedly to the public. What happens if people don't know is, is that the old retired police vehicles, which really aren't old, they're low mileage, but they get heavy use because they're police vehicles. Those are transfer, transferred over to the Department of Public Works. That's your policy. And you and in the past, those vehicles would be used by town employees. Those would be excess vehicles for town employees to use to go around town and to do all their tasks. But now they just get sold. So the police department transfers them over and then they get put up for sale. The last one, and I, I was critical and have been critical of the prior sales, which are going to Town employees. All right. So the last one was posted on Facebook. It was sold yesterday. I don't know who bought it. I, I wasn't able to come down and to see who was coming to purchase. But here's the thing. The listing price is below fair market value to start. They're not being auctioned. Public can inspect. Public can view. As is sale, of course, public has, it says right in there, the public may not see the, may not, may not inspect the vehicles prior to the sale. They have to show up, put the money down and buy the vehicle site unseen. So if you look at how they're being sold, nobody from the public would be stupid enough to port, pay, pay for a vehicle sight unseen without even being able to look at it, open up the engine and pull the oil dipstick and take a look at it. So this seems that that's just a, a setup in a sense for people not to be selling to the public. And this is your job. You've known about it. You should know about it. You have to put a stop to town employees buying vehicles, getting equipment, I heard of a of a uh, of one of those three point turn lawnmowers that had a had a problem with his radiator. Okay, so they sold it to a town employee for five hundred dollars. All right, guess what? It was under warranty. It was under warranty. He got it fixed for free. Town could have just taken it under warranty and had it fixed too. But instead, this kind of insider dealing has got to end. All right, public public does not want town employees to get things that they're not able to get at these greatly reduced prices. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Anybody in the room? Is there anybody online who would like to address the members of Forest Slapman? Hi, Jason, it's Noreen Farmer, 247 South Water Street. I actually, um, it's about a sign that's at the end of um, my South Water Street. Um, it's not our sign. It's a large DOT sign that says that the the project is being funded by the American Rescue Plan or whatever plan it is. And I had called planning and zoning um, and they were very good. They, they went and checked to see if they knew about the sign. Actually, she drove out there to look at the sign, um, the zoning enforcement person, and she doesn't know. It was placed by the Department of Transportation. And I've tried reaching out to them five or six times to find out why this sign is there when there is no project going on. There's no project. Um, and I'm just wondering, 
do you all know if maybe there's going to be a project on the, the Bridge Street Bridge coming up? It, is it on the Bridge Street side of South Water Street or is it on the Route 5 side? It's it's on the um it's on the corner of North Water and Bridge Street. Like if you're sitting at the light at South Water to take a left to go to Windsor Locks, you can see this big sign that says project being funded by I'm just trying to figure out it, is there a project coming? And DOT tells me we know nothing about nothing. Um, so I didn't know if you guys possibly knew if there's some impending project on that bridge. You don't um, need to know right now, but um, it's just weird. <laughs> to me, it's very odd to have a huge sign sitting there that is talking about a project that is non-existent. Um, that's all. Okay. Thanks. Is it prepared for the extra copy of the link? Stuck in the We're, Well, so we'd be speculating. So that, that's the second yeah. idea that's thrown out there is either the Dexter Coffin Bridge or the um, railroad station. But I can, I'm going to be communicating with you. You're looking at the bridge on the right hand side um, just before you go over the bridge. I think it's because there's it's no because place to put the sign on the other side of the, side of the bridge for the project in Windsor Locks. Right. So they put it on our side of the river. Oh, I'll, I'll... okay. Um, we have a couple of communications first. Um, as you all are aware, there was a, a hearing administered by the Site and Council on September 6th. The testimony that I submitted as part of the evidentiary hearing is included. Um, I was not allowed to participate in, as a uh, member of the public because I was exerting a party status. So these are the comments for the record, so you guys are aware of them. Um, the second thing, a little piece of good news, uh, the town has been recognized, and, and kudos to Ruth and Mike D'Amato and their, their department for their work in accomplishing this. We've been recognized um, as a silver certified community by the Community Economic Development Association. Um, a particular note for why they recognized um, the work that's been done here is our organizational capacity and strategy, um, working between departments, communications uh, that have been implemented between the town, its employees, and the community, and policies and programming administered by the Planning and Zoning Commission to streamline the permitting process. So on October 17th, there's going to be an award ceremony where the town will receive that. Just wanted to share that piece of good news. Okay. We have some resignations and a, uh, some reappointments only, just reappointments, all of whom have been um, approached, all of whom have indicated their intention to continue serving their capacities. Um, I, I suggest we take these one at a time. I'll move to reappoint Blaine Simpkins Sr. as a regular member of the Parks and Recreation Commission for a term expiring October 1st, 2028. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Make a motion that we accept Jim Richards onto the Water Pollution Control Authority um, for a regular member for a term of on October 1st, 2020. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll move to reappoint Ann Gobin to the Planning and Zoning Commission as a regular member for a term expiring October 1st, 2027. Second. All in favor? Aye. Make a motion to appoint Stacy McKenna to the Planning and Zoning Commission for a regular member for a term expiring October 1st, 2027. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, number five, seven B five. Uh, Alex is my wife, so I'm going to refuse myself and leave the room and let her uh, run this. So come and let me know when you're done. Okay. Um, under board of commissions, um, seven five. Um, and a little. Alexa uh, Bowser to the Housing Authority is in order. 
I move to reappoint Alexandra Bauza to the Housing Authority as a regular member for a term expiring October 1st, 2028. Second. Second. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. 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 Um, the Greater Together Foundation has done has completed their latest grant round solicitation. Um, in the past, we have served as fiscal sponsors for entities in town where that was necessary. We've been approached by the American Legion Post for a very poker post to do the same. They're looking to do some um, improvements to their um, their building, and they've asked us to be their fiscal sponsors. So um, I wanted to bring that to you guys to get your sign off if we wanted to do that. And then move forward. Make a motion to be a fiscal sponsor for the American Legion Post 40 Barry Poulter uh, American Legion. Uh, I guess it's just American Legion, Legion uh, for their East Windsor Greater Together Community Fund 2023 grant application. And you don't have to sign anything? No. And that's it. Second. Any discussion? We've done it in the past, so I think we've pretty much set a precedent um, to do it. Uh, but who's liable for <clears throat> the content of what's been submitted? Would the applicant is. The applicant is. Okay. Any other questions? <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Ms. Calabrese, how are you this evening? I'm doing well, thank you. Good. Um, you wanted to, well, why don't you tell us a little bit about the statement of work? This is just a continuation of your project. Yeah. So everybody is familiar with what the project is. Last year, we uh, started scanning all the files in the planning department, a record that is about hundreds of thousands of documents. We had some additional boxes that were found in the storage closet back here that we were unaware of. And we would like to scan all our mylars that we have stored down in the annex. Um, the benefit of that is indexing and record retention and destruction and you know, having everything in one place on a master index and uh, ease of retrieval for the public. Um, we were uh, approved by SIP, we took the kind of support too. Um, the contract is exactly the same terms and conditions last year's contract, I read side by side, uh, and it is, the statement of work is uh, totaling out as at $16,696.59, and it is to cover uh, the remaining records and the mylars. <laughs> Just waiting for you to take questions. Go ahead. <laughs> um, on page eight, it has the estimated pre tax total, which is 16,696.59 that you stated. Mm -hmm. But it also clearly indicates in the paragraph below that it truly is just an estimate. And I get the estimate. Um, but if the estimate is off and you add the tax on, um, we're tax exempt. We're, ta we're tax exempt. Okay, that was going to be my next question. Okay, so we're good. Questions or comments? First time around went well. Yes, very well. Documents that were stored down in the annex and the numbered boxes that are barcoded. We have a working index, but additional scanning would be made part of a master index. Um, and that actually have an external hard drive that goes in the vault. So we have it on the share drive and then the. That was the other thing I was going to ask. Yeah. 
Okay. Anybody else? Make a motion to authorize the first selectman to sign the statement of work uh, with Rico CPQ 105 854 ET East Windsor 9 2023 version one for the additional records. There a second. Second. Any discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. So, period. Okay. Um, as you guys are all familiar, um, we are still working on the disposition or the reunification of uh, homes with the underlying ground for the subdivided parcels on South Road. Um, we have another uh, homeowner who has submitted her letter of intention for that. Um, so this board needs to approve conveyance of that property and then refer it to town meeting. Um, there's one other uh, there, that means there's currently four still outstanding. One other has expressed interest, but hasn't yet returned their letter. I expect that'll happen, uh, I'm hoping, next week. Um, so that'll leave us with three of the 17 still outstanding. Um, mm -hmm. So that's that's an update on something you guys are all familiar with, but I do need a, a vote to accept the letter of intent and forward it to a town meeting. Did we do the 822 referral? We did, yeah. That's Back in April, before we started conveying that covered this one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, all 17 parts. Okay. I'll make a motion to authorize um, the cost road cost road and transfer agreement between Don Eastern and South Road, Sandra Carson. Person, can you say that? I'm going to say, I'm going to say person. Okay. Um, South Road, um, and to send a town meeting vote for I know. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Have we, we sent out notice to the other three individuals? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's been communication with them? There has been communication. Um, okay, so the next thing is, uh, this is an annual thing too, um, the town clerk uh, gets access to a grant through the State Library. Um, this is the Historic Documents Preservation Program. She's continuing to, following the same vein of planning is, um, she's con continuing to digitize land records and historical documents. I want to say she's gone all the way back now to 1974. Um, that, that sticks in my head from a staff meeting, but... Um, so she's been kind of chipping away at this, and this is the next piece of that. There it is. <laughs> so this is another one where I need authorization to sign. I'll make a motion to have a... <laughs> I thought that was oddly on point. <laughs> I'll make a motion to grant the first selection based on our relation to sign into the agreement on for the application for the grant in 2024 for the historic document preservation program. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Very good. Tax refunds. I'll move to approve the tax refunds totaling $2,196.12. Is there a second? Second. Made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, all right. Chief Carl, um, we're going on now to the rants. Okay, so this is this is an annual thing as well. Um, this is the grant that's provided for through the Department of Emergency Emergency Services and Public Protection Division of Homeland Security. Um, this provides funding to the towns that participate in the Prague region for the following purposes: uh, regional collaboration, enhancing information and intelligence sharing, and cooperation of federal agencies, addressing emerging threats. Metropolitan Medical Response Systems, Medical Preparation and Response, Citizen Corps Programs, 
enhancing cybersecurity, enhancing the protection of soft targets in, crowd, in crowded places, combating domestic violent extremism, enhancing election security, and enhancing community preparedness and resilience. Um, so Prague, on behalf of its, its 41 member towns, um, get, uh, gets federal funding. This is to indicate that the town of East Windsor wishes to contri uh, could contribute and participate in that. Um, if we are going to do that, it needs to be done by October 1st, and we need to uh, accept a resolution. This is pro forma for the application. Um, okay. Matt, did I miss anything? No, I concur with everything you said. So we need to um, correct. Yeah, we need to uh, move forward, move the certification, and then I'll have the town clerk uh, sign a data. I'll make a motion to authorize um, for selecting Jason Bowser to sign into the documentation for the resolution. Um, so before we do that, just for Peg's benefit, because she wanted to be particular about this, um, I need authorization to, to, there need to be two things to happen. I need authorization to sign and submit the memorandum of agreement between the town of East Windsor and the uh, Department of Emergency Services and Public Protection for the State Homeland Security Grant Program. That's thing one. And then thing two is we need to actually move the resolution. Somebody want to repeat all of that? <laughs> Al? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to mention that. Up here. Make a motion to authorize the first electman to sign the fiscal year 2022 State Homeland Security Grant Program Region 3 Mem Memorandum of Agreement Checklist. Second. Uh, motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Now we need to um, read and adopt the resolution, please. Let's move this or just read it. Um, it's you, you want to read it from resolved to further resolve. You were done? Sure. Oh, you know. Authorizing resolution Town of East Windsor Board of Selectmen resolve that the Town of East Windsor may enter into with and deliver to the State of Connecticut Department of Emergency Services and Public Protection Division of Emergency Management and Homeland Security any and all documents which it deems to be necessary or appropriate and further resolve that Jason E. Bowza, as first selectman of the town of East Windsor, is authorized and directed to execute and deliver any and all documents on behalf of the Board of Selectmen and to do and perform all acts and things which he deems to be necessary or appropriate to carry out the terms of such documents, including but not limited to executing and delivering all agreements and documents contemplated by such documents. The undersigned further. No, that's that's right. Okay. Well, I just moved the foregoing. I just I moved the foregoing resolution. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you for doing that. My voice did not last that long. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Selectman's reports. First, I want to start off by congratulating Melissa Maltesi on being recognized as the 2023 Outstanding Professional by the Connecticut Recreation and Parks Association. We all know that this is a long time coming, but to see Melissa recognized by her peers for her passion and dedication is wonderful to see. She'll be presented with her award at a banquet to be held on November 21st. And I offer congratulations to Melissa, and I'm sure she's going to keep up the good work. I also want to recognize, um, and if you cover this, I apologize for stealing your thunder, but this is a cool story too. Um, I want to recognize five students at Broadbrook Elementary School who spent this summer operating a lemonade stand. On the first day of school, they presented Mrs. Fox with their summer long proceeds, which was a little more than $250. The students asked that the money be donated towards books at the Broadbrook Elementary School Library, and their thoughtfulness, entrepreneurship, and generosity are truly appreciated. 
I also want to acknowledge two staff members who will be leaving service at the town of East Windsor in the next few days. Leo Szymanski Jr. has been offered an opportunity to become a professional firefighter at Bradley Airport, which is a fantastic opportunity for him and his family. And Luann McIntosh is retiring from the town of East Windsor's assessor's office after many years um, as of next Friday. We wish them both much happiness in their new adventures. On September 9th, I was pleased to join the crowd for a ribbon cutting ceremony at Jero Woodworking. A very supportive audience was on hand at this local favorite as they reestablished themselves in a new store space at Pasco's Common. As an interesting side note, um, they're offering classes as well as product for sale, classes they can gear towards people of all ages from school groups to senior groups and everything in between. So um, I thought that was a cool, um, unexpected addition that they had there. Last Monday, tours of our schools continued, this time with Dr. Tudrin leading a group around East Windsor Middle School. Participants included members of the Board of Selectmen, Board of Finance, Board of Education, and Capital Planning Committee, as well as key town staff. We'll be touring the high school in the coming weeks. These tours are designed to coincide with the all schools feasibility study that's taking place, which will position the town to better plan for capital needs in our schools. Site work is underway at East Windsor Park as we continue the installation of our new playground. Once completed, it'll be more than 4,500 square feet, which is a good size playground. Um, this is the first significant investment at that park in terms of playground equipment in many years, and we look forward to a new generation of kids in East Windsor enjoying that amenity for many years to come. Also in the coming weeks, the fuel pump at the PPW garage will be replaced with newer, bigger pumps that will allow for expanded storage and quicker fueling. The one being replaced was end of life and needed to be replaced. Um, this pump services all town vehicles, fire department vehicles, and I think the ambulance as well. Um, our annual scarecrow contest is coming up soon, with this year's theme being East Windsor Strong and whatever that means to you as the participant. Scarecrows can be put up beginning the week of October 13th, uh, with voting to begin on the 18th. Uh, Parks and Recreation has more information about that. Uh, we're looking for booth participants for this year's Haunted Highway event, which will be October 26th at the park. Um, it's going to be a walkthrough model this year instead of a drive-through model. Um, it's been a wildly popular event in the past, um, both amongst um, the kids who are driving through and amongst booth participants. There is, I will say, more than a healthy rivalry that's developed between town staff and the police department. Um, and we look forward to defending our crown again this year. Um, if you'd like to participate in that, you can reach out to Park and Recreation. And as hard as it is to believe, the holidays are coming up fast. We're now accepting signups for holiday meals for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Thanksgiving turkeys will be given out on November 15th and 16th. Christmas hams will be going out on December 20th and 21st. We'll be asking for donations to support those offerings shortly. We'll also be sending out sponsor a child letters in the coming weeks. Uh, if you want any more information on any of those um, initiatives, you can contact social services. That's all I have. Marie? Yeah, I don't have anything other than uh, the housing authority was supposed to meet last night. Um, but as usual, they can go to a meeting on the summer and they'll start the next meetings again next month on schedule. Um, police department um, had a special meeting the other day um, with the fall executive session um, to review candidates um, for openings. Um, so I didn't bother driving down there because I wouldn't be allowed to be in a session. So I stayed away. That's all I got. Sir. On September 11th, I attended the Parks and Recreation Commission meeting. The summer activity calendar was well received by the community as there were lots of activities for the youth to take part in all summer long. As you all know, it was rainier than normal, so campers were moved to the annex or scout hall pretty frequently this year when camp could not be held at East Windsor Park due to weather. There were 11 summer concerts and there were no issues with alcohol or cleanup by attendees. Park Director Melissa Maltesi went over her CIP submissions with the commission. She stressed how it is often difficult to get quotes for projects because the likelihood of funding is slim. She also stated how she is trying to be proactive and look ahead rather than wait until something breaks and needs to be repaired. This year's submissions include skate park equipment for the BMX skate park, replacement of gazebos at Volunteer Park, East Windsor Park, and Broadbrook Pond, playground upgrades and replacements, 
basketball court repairs at East Windsor Park, Osborne Park, and Prospect Hill, and concrete pads and park amenities at all town parks. The weather has slowed down the work on the ADA compliant playground as the contract has been, contractor has been delayed in making progress on another project here in town, which must be completed first. There were some paperwork issues at the state level for the Abbey Road lighting project, and that job was tentatively to start on Monday. Last weekend was kickoff weekend for East Windsor soccer, and there is a partnership in place with Connecticut Titans Baseball, who is occupying Osborne Field. After school programs will be offered soon, and they include CPR certification, home alone safety, and babysitting. Um, Jason already mentioned the Scarecrow Contest and the Haunted Highway. On September 12th, the Arts and Culture Committee met. The carved owl that will be displayed at the Scantic Trail in Melrose will be named, I might say this wrong, I believe it's pronounced Gaia, which means goddess of nature in Greek. Congratulations to Jenna Pomeroy, who gave the winning name. She received an American Heritage River Commission t-shirt as well as an arts and culture t-shirt for being selected. The arts and culture committee is collaborating with the soccer club and moving forward on a mural that will be on a kickboard at Osborne Field. The group discussed possible projects for upcoming grant opportunities and future events, including a possible upcycle contest. A what? Upcycling, like recycling things oh. and making like a planter out of... Yeah, yeah. I was thinking bicycling. Oh, <laughs> um, The committee is also sponsoring a food drive fundraiser at East Windsor Park on Sunday, October 1st from noon to 4 p.m. Please bring a canned good or non-perishable item as your entry fee to the event that will benefit the Five Corner Cupboard. There will be music from three local bands, artists, and vendors. And they did receive a generous donation from Noreen Farmer, who was in attendance that night to cover the committee's insurance for the day of the event. And I really have to say it was really a refreshing and positive meeting with a lot of laughter and collaboration, all working together to benefit the community. It wasn't, it was just really refreshing to see and be in that environment. Um, and I unfortunately missed the Veterans Commission meeting. They actually, it was on a Wednesday instead of the Thursday. So I unfortunately couldn't make it, but um, I did hear they were discussing the upcoming road race on November 11th. And that's what I have. All right. right. So September 11th, Where Else Point Fire held their um, monthly meeting. Um, the only thing of significance to report there is they reported to 55 incidents last month. And the fire inspector completed 20, or the fire marshals department completed 27 inspections. Um, on September 13th, I attended Board of Education. Jason already mentioned the awards given to the five girls with um, their um, event that they took place in over the summer. Um, also, in that meeting, um, Shell Wiley was. Um, announced and um, awarded uh, Teacher of the Year. Uh, she is currently teaching at the Robert Elementary School. Uh, she gave a nice presentation, um, was very touching, and um, part of what she has to do when she um, goes and competes on the state level as well. Um, and then the Robert Elementary School principals did a small um, introductory of what's being offered new in their school this year. Um, they're doing a D.A.R.E. program for this future year, and they've also started an um, elementary school band, um, which is really significant. Um, they're offering in ways to help kids get introduced into musical instruments um, and even helping with getting them musical instruments to use, whether they're used or um, borrowed um, from other um, school members or people who just don't use them anymore. Um, and as far as upcoming events, there's the big roast at Wells Point Fire um, September 30th, and I believe September 30th is also both waste drop off um, on Shaw Lamb Road. So, and Sarah already mentioned the veterans' purpose, and that's all I have.
I had one meeting since we last met was planning and zoning. It was a total of it was virtual only. It was 15 minutes long and I couldn't get into it. I had a problem with my computer, I guess, but it was not much that went on there. So I had to report from that. All right. We'll turn it back to public participation, public second opportunity to address members of the board of selectmen. Um, I'll again, first ask anybody here in the room if they'd like to speak in rules, name and address, uh, and then I'll provide the same opportunity to those folks online. Uh, gentlemen in the back, can I move? Yep. Pete Dagelop at the Depot Street again. I want to address the playground. Um, the original master plan for recreation had the playground across the street, and then it was changed over to be the park, which I'm fine with because there was some explanation that would allow people that attend the playground access to the other amenities that are within the park. Uh, of course, one of the explanations was that it would increase the attendance fees, which are currently around $12,000 a year. So that doesn't make any sense to spend $800,000 on a park to increase tenant attendance fees. But the issue is, is that that is state bonded money. It's for a playground for inclusivity for everybody in the community to be able to use, whether they're healthy, uh, healthy whether they have a handicap or disability, or um, they don't have a disability, whether they're poor or rich or anything like that. My experience when my kids were growing up is my wife was fortunate to be able to take the kids to the playground every day. That's what they did, all right, amongst other things. That's what a lot of parents do, mothers and fathers, they take the kids to the playground. We need to reconfigure the, the admission aspect of, of Reservoir Park. We should not be charging people admission to, a, to, to make use of a playground that has been funded with state bonded money to the tune of $800,000. That playground belongs to the town. And there's no reason why we should be charging people to go into that playground and, be, and pay for it. And, and, and I don't care if it's $2 a day or $2 a summer, it doesn't matter to me. That's a public playground. It should be open to the public. And quite frankly, so should a lot of the other amenities in Reservoir Park. They should be open to the general public to be able to use the picnic benches, to be able to play on the fields. What we need to do is just have the, the, the swimming area and the swimming amenities pay for that because you have to hire lifeguards, you need um, uh, additional materials, and that's a specific use. But that reservoir park can be open to the public. The entire last the last year's report, last February, the entire um, collections for admissions was $12,000. 4,500 people for $12,000. We are charging people to use a public park so we can get $12,000? Makes no sense. So let's charge for the water, but this playground needs to be open for free to everybody to use. Thank you. Other public comment? You, sir. Paul Anderson, 89 Main Street, proper. Um, I heard a rumor that the community center of bid package is out. Is that true? No. Um, it, it, it's prepared. The building committee needs to look. I got it. That's fine. I'm not looking to pick on it. Um, and the other right in my head was, unfortunately, I missed the deadline for submitting a name to the owl, which I was going to submit. Who? <laughs> I'll say done. Any other? Yes, sir. Name it. Uh, Louis Reality 414 Canyon Ridge Drive. Uh, I'd like to take an opportunity to congratulate Chief Carl. And uh, since he's the top cop, I always, when a cop enters the room, I always give my respect to him. And I want you to pass on to the men and women of your department that. This guy backs you 100%, and you're doing the best you can, and it's some trouble in times. And thank you for all you do. You let the officers know this guy appreciates what you do. Really do. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone online who would like to address the members of the Board of Selectmen? Uh, Jason and Noreen Farmer, 247 Southwater Street. Um, I'm very excited that the playground is finally starting. Um, it um the delay that got caused because of some court issues and whatnot was really very sad that it could not be there this summer for people to use but i'm very very happy that that's finally coming to fruition um and i just wanted to talk about the art and culture jump off of what sarah said i was at their last meeting and it was the most enjoyable night i've ever had at a meeting in east windsor um, a lot of us tend, attend a lot of meetings that are just very 
yeah, you know, they can be very acrimonious. They can be very boring. They, there's a whole host of things. I may go to their meeting every month just because it was so much fun. Um, they're doing an exceptional job. There are there weren't a lot of people there, but the the ideas that flow out of their brains is just absolutely remarkable. And if you really just want to go have a fun meeting, try checking theirs out because it was really very fun. Thanks. To be a lot of competition at the next board to be the li liaison. That means. <laughs> 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 Is there been any talk of naming the private school um, with carbon that's on the back side of the school? Not not naming. No, not yet. No. It's actually come out very nice over this part in that. I don't know if anybody's had an opportunity to see it, but it has a great one. Yeah. That was the same thing as the Jero woodworking uh, ribbon cutting. So I pulled off and watched the guy with a chainsaw and a little potting thing of, you know, a little sculpture of a bulldog. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Um, we will have an executive session. Um, I'd ask for a motion to go into executive session to include Chief Carl, Bob Leach, and Tom Reardon. So moved. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Can you state Opposed? the reasons why you're going to call executive session and it's required to do that? We are in executive session at 751.